guys, Memes here, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part two of the keyboard build, and I'm gonna be focusing on programming my custom keyboard using QMK environment. I will demonstrate how I built the QMK environment and how I used QMK toolbox to flash the firmware. All links, installers, and commands that I use will be listed down below. And at the end of this video, I will use VIA to show you how easy it is to designate each key for the action that you desire. Okay, let's get to it. This is documentation I initially used. These are the steps for setting up and testing the QMK environment. The first step I took was downloading QMK Toolbox. So I followed this link, which takes you to the latest version. At the time of filming, it was 19, but they do update frequently. I will grab the QMK Toolbox install and quickly run through the wizard. As you can see, I am using a Windows computer, but the documentation does have steps for other operating systems as well. I will use QMK Toolbox to flash the firmware once I get to that step. Next step is preparing the environment. Here you choose what steps to follow depending on the operating system. I used the Windows path but you also have an option for Mac and Linux. Going back up, I will click the link and install msys2. Once this program is installed, I will run a package database and a package update command. Just finishing up the wizard, I did speed up the loading bar for your convenience. Now that msys2 is installed, first command I will run is pacman syu. This will install any dependencies or updates needed for the environment to work. The second command I will run is pacman su and let the package repositories install. Next step is setting up QMK. I just ran the QMK setup command. This step takes some time because it is configuring and setting up the environment using the packages I ran earlier. Once this finishes installing, I will enter another command that will build a default key map. I will then install VIA, which is the application I will use to program each key. Then I will use QMK Toolbox to flash the firmware. I sped up the QMK setup process again for your convenience, but it did take a good amount of time to complete. Some keys will not work properly because this custom keyboard is not a standard keyboard. As you can see, the Corsair keyboard has gaps between the arrows and numpad, and the page up, down, delete button are organized differently. So the default key map will not match my custom keyboard. We will fix that in the next step. While the key map is being built, I will down the VIA application from caniuseviya.com. From the same site, I will also grab the firmware I will flash with QMK Toolbox. Just doing a quick search for Melody96, and I will download that as well. Key map build finished, and VIA is almost done. Just gonna close that for now. Next step is flashing the firmware. I am plugging the keyboard in because QMK Toolbox needs to detect the keyboard before flashing the firmware. In the file area, I will drop the Melody96 firmware to be flashed. One issue I ran into was this error. DFU programmer, no device found. With a quick Google search, I found a simple solution. I opened Device Manager and updated the ATM32U4DFU driver to ATMega32U4 which is the format QMK Toolbox uses. I reopened QMK Toolbox and began flashing the firmware. All right, so this is VIA. You can't really see right now, but I'll have a close up uh, a little bit later. This is configure. So this is where you're gonna configure the keyboard. Here are your options. And this is like your keyboard layout that depicts this right here. Um, if you go to key tester, which is right here, you can test your keys and see what is set right now. So right now I know that the numbers are set. So you can click it, you know, it's four, five, six, one, two, three. And you can see that it shows it right here. And if it's the correct key that you're clicking here, then you don't have to configure those. But there are some, since this is not a standard keyboard, there's gonna be um, a good amount that I'll have to program manually. This button right here is insert but on the screen it says home. So what you would do is you click the button. So it's right next to, it's 12, then print, and then insert. Here we have 12 print home. So I clicked home, I'm gonna hit insert, making it the insert button. So now I go back to a key tester and I'll hit insert. So the next thing I wanted to show um, on the VIA program is lighting so i had to turn off the lights a little bit but down here is lighting this is for the underglow which is down here right now you'll see just white 
it's kind of pulsing a little bit. Um, but here you can change the color. This is always fun. So let's say blue. See, now you'll see it's blue. Let's see, let's see if I want to change it to some weird green. And the underglow is now green. So I think that's pretty cool. You can also, let's say, let's change it from breathing to breathing three. You see how it's pulsing a little bit faster. That's always fun. To give a closer look at VIA, here's Configure and Key Tester. These are the two that I was working with earlier. Um, this is the key map. So this right here is your custom keyboard. And these are all of the options that you can set each key to. So there's different ones. You can look through it and pick the best ones for your layout. So as you can see right now, these are the current configurations that I have set. And if you go to Key Tester, you can start typing just to make sure that all of them are working properly. And if you find any that are not set to the correct key, you can always go back to configure and set them correctly. Once you are finished configuring your, your keyboard, you can go to save and everything will take effect. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more tech fun.